How's it going everyone? In this video, I'm going to, uh, by popular request, go through creating a systemd unit file, uh, specifically a service. Uh, this is on the heels of my previous video, the live coding, the SSH alert application, which is just uh, something that sends you a text message when root logs in or someone, someone runs sudo on your uh, on a server, right? So this is something you would install on a server and this would be like a tiny little guard um, that checks the authentication log to um, alert you when something's happened. Now I'm gonna take you through kind of in, in detail the thing that you saw very quickly in that other video, which is uh, creating a unit file. A unit file just makes this a native like system service. And since system D is our init system and all kinds of other things, you can do things like system cuddle stop, system cuddle start, and it'll just behave uh, normally. Like if you're used to like service nginx restart, well, uh, now you can do service SSH restart, that kind of thing. Yeah, so let's actually look at the code. When in doubt, look at the code. So here's the unit file that we're starting with. Um, this I'm just shipping this in the same repository uh, as the, the Python code for the project. But you can see it's basically just got a little description. And if this is like a big mystery to you and you've never touched this before, just you know follow along and then read some of the documentation. Um, the documentation is dense, but it is all there. I'm just gonna try to give you the most the, the most important concepts so you can just go do this yourself confidently. I copy and paste some number of templates for this over and over again, either from ones I've written or uh, from the interwebs. There's a one specific thing here that's different than you'll usually see, and that is the environment file uh, directive here. I'm gonna pass in an environment file to this service. So this thing on whatever machine it's running is gonna expect a file at this path that is secrets.env, and it expects to uh, find some some sort of systemd formatted key value pairs here that are gonna get passed in as environment variables that the, the application itself, which this is gonna start, can have access to. Does that make sense? Here is the format of this file. So this is your, it's just gonna be one line after another with key equals value, key equals value. So let's actually set this bad boy up. I'm gonna create a new DigitalOcean droplet because when in doubt, create a new DO droplet to test stuff. Um, and since 2004 is out, we'll just use that new version of Ubuntu, see if this all works. I'm gonna use the cheapest droplet, which is five bucks a month. I'm only gonna use this for a few hours. Um, I find DigitalOcean to be just better and easier, especially for my own projects than Amazon. So that is what I recommend. There is an affiliate link below. So if you wanna help with the channel, visit that link. Uh, I think you get some free, free droplet time too uh, when you sign up through that link. So please do. Uh, I'm just gonna pick a close region. You don't need any of this extra stuff. I'm going to use the tutorial Linux key. Uh, that's the SSH key you're gonna log in as. And just a single droplet. And we're gonna name it um, SSH alert system D unit test. You do not need a big name like that. We're gonna create the droplet and log into it when we're ready. Okay, so we already have an IPv4 address that we're gonna be able to use once this thing is booted up. It does actually, these come up way faster than the Amazon ones. Look, I'm not a shill, all right? But it's just way faster than Amazon EC2. All right, it looks like we're finally ready. Yes. Machine is up and we're logged in. So we're on the remote machine now. And here's where we're gonna kind of install everything. Now, just for the purposes of this here, I'm going to uh, install everything in slash root. But obviously if you're really running an application server or something, and you might already have an application user or some other like non-root users. I mean, you should on the system to do some stuff. So I'm just gonna assume that you have that. So we know that this works and now we um, we also know the, the, the IP address. So we're gonna go back one directory and you'll see our SSH alert uh, directory in here. And we are literally just going to rsync this bad boy over into um, slash root. It would be this by default anyway. Um, but I'm just gonna make this the IP. And if you're not familiar with rsync, it's a tool you definitely wanna become familiar with. Uh, all this is really saying is we're going to rsync this entire directory. We're going to compress it on the way over. 
um, we're going to show progress, um, and I think human readable sizes, um, and we're going to include uh, exclude the virtual environment directory because we're going to recreate that virtual environment over uh, on our on our target environment, and it looks like we're good. Um, if you uh, if you want to add a V, I usually don't do V. I can slow things down, but there you go. That's a verbose. You can see sent this many bytes, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to very quickly set up the application here without explaining much um, because we're just trying to talk about the unit file. So I'm just going to set up the application and we'll speed that up. Okay, so I have just verified that everything basically works. The application set up. I created a virtual environment, installed all the um, requirements, and I'm just going to deactivate, if I can spell that, the VN. And we're kind of back where we started, except now we have a configured virtual environment. The next step for me is actually creating the service, and we're going to use Etsy systemd system. SSH alert service. There's a bunch of different paths that you might uh, use. Um, SystemD searches for units. Uh, service is a type of unit. You can have all kinds of different things, like even um, sockets, you know, files. Um, I'm not even going to get into that now. But um, here's the search path. So when you add files to these directories, some of which are permanent, others are not, SystemD will look here for them. Uh, it's not going to do that automatically, though. So we're going to have to do uh, daemon reload to make sure systemd has picked up the new service that we're adding a file for. So let's go and do that. So um, you could just like copy the file over if you had it, but we're just gonna we're just gonna create it here. And the file content, um, I'm just gonna update the because we don't have an SSH alert user. Um, we're gonna modify all of these paths, and it's just gonna be root slash root and then everything's gonna be in this SSH alert directory in here. Does that make sense? So now we can just copy this. We can uh, really just paste it in here. And let's see, as long as we have a secrets.env file, which you know we don't yet, that should all work. So let's add our secrets.env file. This is where you, know, you would actually have to sign up for uh, Vonage, Nexmo, the API, and make sure you have some credentials that work. But I'm going to do that out of sight quickly, add my credentials, and then we can test this. So this next part is, okay, we've created the file. Now we need to make systemd aware that there is this new file. So we're going to do a daemon reload. And that's going to go ahead, uh, actually, I'll, I'll show you right now. Um, if I do a systemd uh, list units. Ah, uh, Jesus. Is it, I never list unit files? What, what is it? Systemd list units. Systemd, it is list unit files. What did I do wrong? Why am I? Oh, system cuddle. I'm such a dummy. Um, so system cuddle list units. If I search for SSH alert here, like systemd doesn't know what I'm talking about. It's not constantly scanning that directory that we added the file to for changes. So we need to do a system cuddle daemon reload and that will pick up the file change that we had so now when we system cuddle list unit files we can ssh alert is here so all we really need to do is test it by starting it and then if it works as expected then we can just have it run on boot every time with enable so we'll start it we'll check the um, status again now it's active and running you can see Lovely. And now we can enable it, right? Uh, we can just uh, enable. And so now, you know, we're, we're just managing this like any other service. It's created a symlink to make sure that this thing starts when, it, when, when we boot up the machine. And again, if we look at this file, I mean, it's just, it's pretty simple. All it's saying is when you bring this up and reach the multi-user target, which means, you know, basically everything's running, on the machine, um, it we want this to run, and the service is just a simple service 
and here's how you start it. Here's basically the command you run when you start it. And oh, by the way, the service is gonna expect a few things, like it needs its secrets. Well, here's a file containing all of those environment variables uh, to keep it nice and neat. That's our secrets.env file. Now, there are more complex things you can do with systemd. You should understand how uh, the units work. But this this type of service, if you're just, it, it, it's gonna, it's gonna work for like 80% of what you need. Um, and then for the rest, you dive into different unit types maybe, or get into much more uh, complex uh, kind of logic around when to start the service. So like where to, where to start this thing up in the ordering of services. Does it have any dependencies? Um, are they soft or hard dependencies? Um, you can get kind of complicated with this. But again, what you have here, and you know, it is not complicated in our service file. What you have here is gonna get you most of the way, most of the time. So I hope that's helpful. I hope that explains that last portion of the video and what I was doing there and why. And I hope that now you have the skills to, uh, to go off and do this yourself. So when you write a long running daemon, uh, some software that you want to run, uh, you know, like all the time the machine is running or something and it's gonna do stuff in the background. This is the kind of thing you're probably looking for. Uh, remember to like and subscribe. Share this if it's useful. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.